In this video, we're gonna learn about roasting. So before we dig into the roasting method, I think it's important to talk about the difference between baking and roasting. Um, and the reality is, is that the methods are really, really similar. Um, and a lot of it depends on who you ask and the way that they're using it. So um, roasting and baking are both going to uh, be dry heat methods that are going to cook food in an oven by surrounding them by hot air. Generally, we think about roasting versus baking uh, based on the product that we're using. So a lot of times we hear uh, the word roasted applied to meats, whereas baking we hear applied to vegetables, um, pastries, breads, things like that. Um, but that's not always true. Um, you know, sometimes we'll see things that say roasted vegetables. Um, so kind of in my mind, the thing that differentiates baking versus roasting is roasting um, is going to start with a sear or be at a higher temperature. So roasting, we're oftentimes going to see uh, a lot of that color development uh, through mylar browning. Um, so we're going to start either with, again, a sear or, uh, or cook at a higher temperature, whereas baking, uh, we're not necessarily going to get uh, you know, all of that color depending on the products that we're using. But they are kind of a gray area between uh, baking and roasting. So for roasting, um, there's a couple things that we need to keep in mind. Um, so like I said, uh, roasting is going to be uh, surrounding a product uh, in hot air in an oven. And so to surround a product in hot air, we need to make sure the air can circulate around it. So um, there are roasting pans that are designated roasting pans uh, that are going to be big pans uh, and they're going to have a big insert in the middle. Um, but just a, a sheet pan uh, with a cooling rack will work just fine. It's important that uh, whatever we're roasting on, that the sides of the pan aren't so deep that our product is sitting inside. Um, we'll, we're much more likely to steam when that happens because uh, we're not allowing that hot air to circulate around. The other thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the food is lifted up off the pan. And this cooling rack uh, is doing that. You can see that there are feet on this cooling rack, which are going to lift it up on the pan. It's not flush with the bottom uh, of our sheet pan here, uh, so that hot air can circulate around it. Okay. So I said it's going to be really important uh, to sear or to cook at a higher temperature uh, when we're roasting. And that's because we want to develop a nice crust on whatever it is we're roasting. Um, so there's a couple ways we can do this. Um, so for a smaller product, we could uh, use a hot pan and sear in a hot pan to get a nice crust. Um, for a larger product, maybe um, a beef tenderloin, maybe I don't have a pan that a beef tenderloin is easily going to fit into, I could sear, put some color on the outside by using a grill uh, or a griddle if I have it. The other thing I could do is I could set my oven to a higher temperature and cook it at a higher temperature until I, until I develop a crust and drop the temperature back down. Um, so that's what we're going to do for our chicken today. Uh, we're doing just a small chicken breast that we're going to roast. So we're going to set our oven at a higher temperature until we develop some color and then uh, drop it back down uh, to finish the cooking process. So I'm going to start by seasoning my chicken with a little oil, salt, and pepper. The oil is going to help with that mylar browning. A nice brown color to our roast. Okay. Put my chicken breast onto my roasting pan here. And then we're going to go ahead and put this into a hot oven until we develop a nice crust and then drop it down until we reach an internal temperature of 165 degrees for 15 seconds for our chicken. So we'll go ahead and do that and we'll check back in with you once we're done. All right, so our chicken is roasted and rested, uh, and that's going to be uh, an important uh, second step. So once our chicken uh, reaches its desired temperature, 165 for 15 seconds, um, we need to let it rest. We're gonna let it rest uh, based on how large the product is. So a really small piece of chicken like this, 
five minutes, totally fine. Um, you know, if I was doing a big primal cut, uh, I might let it rest for 45 minutes. Um, that's going to help the, the muscles to relax and help us to maintain uh, some of the juiciness that we've worked hard to, to get in our product. So let's look at our chicken here. You can see on our outside, <clears throat> We have this really nice crust that we've developed. It's because we started in that hot oven until we got that color and then dropped it back down. The other quality mark of our roasted food is going to be the juiciness that we can maintain. So you can see as I cut this and then when I just give it just a little pressure, you can see all that juice that kind of is right there. Um, this is both a combination of a good method and good heat management. Um, so we started that high, dropped it down uh, to a lower temperature, and then we removed it once it reached that 165 degree uh, temperature for 15 seconds. So let's review. Roasting and baking are very similar methods. Roasting is generally going to be applied to products like meats, where baking is going to be applied to uh, things like vegetables, breads, and pastries, although not always. Sometimes people will use the word roasted to describe vegetables that have been uh, baked at a higher temperature. When roasting, we want to make sure that we sear our product. This can happen either in a pan, on a grill, on a flat top, or by setting the oven to a higher temperature initially and then dropping it down once we've achieved our desired sear. Finally, we want to make sure to allow our products to rest before cutting into them. This allows the muscle fibers to relax and for us to maintain the desired juiciness of our product.